Yes, I'm ready. Oh, okay. Ready? So what do we got going on? We got a... A three, a two, a one. And Ryan, episode three. Of working on it. Working on it. Um, What are we working on today? I'm working on this heating pad because she bleeding and yeah. we're cramping. Okay. We're back to normal. That's, Don't miss it. Oh, this is, what is this, your first one? A menstrual one? cycle. Oh uh, yeah, is it your first one? It's my second one since birth. Damn. Since I had a baby. So you don't get them that, I thought it was like a monthly thing. It is a monthly thing. But it's been like six, isn't your child six months old? Right, right. But when you stop breastfeeding, which okay. I stopped around four months, then you got to wait for it to come back. And it's just a surprise. Wow. What an awesome surprise. What an awesome surprise. <laughs> but now I'm back like clockwork. I don't know. So how do, what does it feel like? Miserable. Just, I can actually buy a machine to show you what it feels like. Rather, I'm going to do that. Rather not. We're going to do that. Actually, We're it could be funny that. content. Yeah, dude. It's great. I tried for to do it for Daryl, and he was like, no. Uh, we're going to do it. Yeah, just down here, a lot of cramping. Oh, you know what diarrhea feels like? Yeah. All that without the diarrhea. So it's just all the built up yeah, it's without like little, the release. Little kitty scratching on your lower belly. A little kitty? He's like, nah. but, but you just feel sore, right? Yeah, like somebody punched you down there. Okay, got it. Well, um, I went to physical therapy yesterday Ugh. for the first time ever. Because you're a runner? Yes, marathon, uh, New York City Marathon, Boston Children's Hospital. Um, yes, and <laughs> did you love it? It was it was one of the like worst best things of all time. Uh, love hate. My girl Susie. Susie, I fucking shout hate her. out. <laughs> I fucking hate her, but I love her. You know, did and she, she said you? she's like you're going to despise me during this whole process. Oh my god! And what is your safe word? <gasps> safe word. Yeah. What is it? Pineapple. Ugh. Yeah. So you don't have one. You couldn't think of a good one. What do you mean? Pineapple's That's great. That's a classic. Yeah. Okay. It's a classic safe word. Okay. And you had to use it? It was on the spot. I used it multiple times. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she used this thing called a piezo wave. Um, and it, So I have scar tissue on my right knee. And it's just been built up. And it uses sound waves, I think. All the way down to the bone. <laughs> I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I put up a link. Um, there's like a YouTube video if you really want to see okay how it works oh you mean you want to watch it with me if you want but we it don't have to it sounds like oh, a little boring but i'm like i'll do it for okay. you if you want no no we don't have to we don't have to you can look it up it's a pies away i'll look it up so, later so it's like an ultrasound jelly on Love the that. knee yeah my ultrasound yeah but and it just zaps it just zaps your bone and gets rid oh, of scar tissue so i'm just staring she she was trying to describe it. i was like don't just try, describe it just go 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 and Immediately, I'm looking at her like, <sighs> trying not to say pineapple. And she's like, dude, this is just 12. It goes up to 18. Yeah. Yeah. Men are weak. <laughs> bro, <laughs> dude, you try running like, like I'm running 12 face. miles after this, dude. At a fa bro, you wouldn't last a facial. At a facial at the end, they have this electric shocking thing. And it's like, and I can go up all the way. Beauty is pain. Beauty is pain. Any hoosers, <laughs> this episode, we're working on sobriety. Yeah, we are. We're only 20 seconds in, bro. What? Sorry, I got bored. I wanted to jump into the topic. No. <laughs> Start thinking of more stuff. We're not 20 seconds in, bro, also. We're not? No. Devin. Oh, fucking okay. <laughs> Devin, come on. Comes late with the timer. I was like, no way, bro. That was like minutes. You don't have anything going on in your life? What is it every day? Just wake up with a kid and that's what you do? Oh my god! <laughs> you like um, play with Riley, and then hand him off to Daryl, and he like changes them and stuff. Oh my god! <laughs> um, uh, no, I'm super busy. Um, <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm taking a slight break right now before we get into studio making songs. I like your new move of like work really hard and then take a little break right after. Yes, I think it's better for you. Yes, I need that emotionally, mentally. Until it's you put out the album, then it's like game over, and then you got to just go yeah, ham for what a year. Then it's goodbye. Yeah. But um, I'm not planning on traveling until 
the COVID thing is much better. <laughs> I don't want to go. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Um, All right, yeah. So we're we... working on we're working on sobriety today. Yeah, sobriety. We're gonna get into it. It is just gonna be my day. Today. This is your day of therapy, and I'm so excited. Huh, huh. It's gonna be a lot. I woke up like so excited to come to work today. Really? Yeah, and I have no idea what I'm. Oh, mommy wants you to know that. Um, don't worry about anything you say. And she loves you no matter what. I know, because mom is the only one listening, and I feel bad. But this is, <laughs> let me preface, my journey yes. is, you, you could be, which they are, the best parents in the Greatest world. Parents. And sometimes your child's just going to figure out life the hard way. Mm-hmm. Let them fall. There's nothing you could do about Except it. Except Riley, I will not let him. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Again. But can we... <laughs> you could be the best parent in the world. He's going to say, in my bubble. Um, if you're wondering what this is, it's a beautiful heating pad from Amazon.com. Um, we cramp in. So before we get into it, can we bring our favorite person on this couch? Yes. Yeah? Yes. He's actually one of my most favorite humans of all time. Yes, he is. He is... Um, let's see. He's one of the godparents of my son. That's oh, I huge. forgot. <laughs> I named my son's middle name after him, Thomas. Right. And um, he's my best friend. And anytime there's something wrong, he's the only person I can truly ask for help and get the yeah, best he, advice. He's my confidant. Yeah. And like for anyone in my family, I'm like, you should ask Tommy. Yeah. He's my manager as well. We used to be my agent, now manager. He's been with me since I was 19. So almost at 10 years. Holy Christ. Holy. We are old. Um, yeah, just the best guy in the world. Here he is. <laughs> Here he is. Tommy Bruce. Tommy Bruce, baby. Ah! Yeah. Tommy Bruce, we- not Bruce. Huh? <laughs> Tommy Bruce. Woo, woo, woo. Hi, gang. Hi. Hi. Hey. Wait, do we throw a party for our 10-year anniversary? We should. Yo, I bet you yes. both the same night. So, he did. Yeah. How? Nice guy. Nice guy. Oh, yep. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy is a bar in Los Angeles. Nice guy. And I was trying to reenact what emojis would look like in person. <laughs> and <laughs> making it. Was I, I don't drunk? remember this night. Oh, yeah. I drank a bunch of tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's How actually a perfect into segue nice into tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 because actually, this is a great segue. When I met you both that night, neither of you remembered, and I saw Ryan the next week, and he was like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Ryan Trainer." <laughs> <Wow. laughs> so Again, embarrassing. Just one of the downfalls of- uh, He usually remembers everything. No. No, I did, no, I did not. I, and that's mean, not really a trainer trait. No. Well, I forget. Everybody yeah. remembering I everything forget. is not a trainer trait. No shot. Trait. <laughs> I really no wish shot. I remember that night. It was fun. I don't know. I mean, who knows? I remember it. It was very. It was what the core memory in my world. It was a good time. So I can reenact it. I know we had a good time. Yeah, we had a great time. Best time. Really good time. Cody Simpson was there. Yeah, we was. Yeah, he's always there. I know. You were like anytime I'm there, he is there. But at that time, it was so exciting because you guys had just moved to Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was so 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 you were literally like. Do you think I can meet Cody Simpson? Dude, and whatever. I, was like, I love Cody yeah. Simpson. Yeah. I was like, I'm you could sure definitely you meet can. Him. There's like a hundred people in this room right now. Sure. <laughs> I did. I went up to him. <clears throat> yeah. You did meet him that night. Okay. I remember this night. Yeah. I was that so one. nervous and I was wearing something crazy. Who knows what any of us were wearing. <laughs> J-Train was in cargo shorts. Yeah, dude. Bring, that was the only hard part of bringing you guys everywhere is Justin will be like, well, I'm wearing my Nike sweatpants. That's why I'm I like, love him. Yo, dude. That's He's why just I love being him. him. Well, yeah. that's like the just first time him. we went on our world trip together. These two were taking photos of my outfits at every airport. <laughs> and <Yo>. sending, <laughs> sending American it. flag sweatshirts. I, I really, I don't know why I owned so many items that were um, USA flag. related. Yeah, just so proud. Just proud <laughs> to be yeah, American. Yeah. Like, very proud. to be an American. And I got stopped at every, every single airport. Checkpoint. <laughs> Every they security like, checkpoint that ever suspicious. existed. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I guess don't be proud to be an American yeah, when you hit no. like any other country. <laughs> it was outrageous. Oh, that was um, good. I heard the chiropractor conversations. They're awful. Chiropractors. They're awful. Yeah. yeah. I hurt my back last week Tough and gig. have been seeing one this last week. And they do. They're like, you're going to hate me. Dude, she loved. What is it? <clears throat> she loved. Uh, it's because it's so much me pain. pain. Yeah. But Does that means help? progress. Yeah, yeah, No, it's awesome. Like, I yeah. love it. I need it. I need to. Because now, today I feel amazing. I can't wait to run ten, uh, 12 miles. 
<laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> you can't Can you wait. Not wait. I, I don't feel like doing yeah, it. Yeah, but I have to, dude. I have to. But you're saying it out, so that works. Yeah, I will. I'm into saying it out loud. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Deep yeah down. Thing. Do I believe it? Yeah. That's Today the trick. I do. That's I believe the trick. it. I believe it. <laughs> I can't wait for you to run 12 miles. That I believe actually. No, because I'm I'll not be running fine. it. I'll be yeah, fine, me and either. then I'll go back. This is going to be my new, my second home, uh, Sports Rehab LA. Nice little shout out to them. Oh, I love that. At least Anyways, once or twice a guys, week. sobriety. Yeah. yeah. What are we working on today? We're working on sobriety. Sobriety. I'm sobriety. So. I'm sobriety. I'm sober just because like it's too exhausting. Like two <laughs> glasses of wine. Oh my god, I'm out of here. I'm on Amazon, like destroying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My life. Online shopping can really get you. After yeah. a couple of glasses of wine. We're little islanders. That's all we ever knew. Online shopping. Yeah. yeah. I mean, on the island, you ordered online, like, Chinese food that had been yeah. delivered. Yeah, you flew so in Chinese you had, food. You just didn't have anything there. We didn't have anything. Yeah. Do you think sobriety in, like, the current world order is more prevalent than it's ever been? Like, do you think more people are dealing with it now than they ever have? Yes. I think so, yeah. Or, the, think... or more people are talking about it. Like acknowledging that Yeah, that's that what I'm unsure. I'm like, is it more people are dealing with it or more people are talking about it because it's a more welcome opening? I think both. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah. a lot of actually like information on TikTok. Like there's a lot of people just being like, hey, I'm sober. Join me on this journey. Um, and more and more people yeah. are doing that to maybe inspire others or just to give their point of view yeah i mean and maybe that maybe that's just my for you page i was like i have never seen dude, anything like that bro, on my even for you before, page, even before for you page I, is dude, amazing before i decided to do this that a lot of tiktoks were coming through <laughs> like that i'm like you. what is going on Angels. you were meant to see this today right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i hate those i know, <laughs> I know. there's no but, hashtag this is just, this is just for you <laughs> yeah you were meant to see this but that is a good segue into obviously today's topic came from you ryan so yeah. what like, what was the point? What this was is, he's never done therapy? Like, no, this for is going to be therapy. I had, so where I did, and I did I do therapy a lot of once. Therapy. I doesn't believe in it. No, I did it once in high school. I had a very bad uh, experience. Maybe I needed a, a, a woman therapist. I did not like this dude. You had a it, guy. Yeah. Nah, well, it takes it takes a it takes a minute to find. You have to the be able one. to connect with your therapist. Yeah. And it is yeah. not easy because you have to be able to be open. I had a therapist for a long time, and then she tried to convince me to quit being a musician and i was like mm, this isn't for me right not a match yeah, like, there's definitely a middle ground there you know yeah. <laughs> she's like that's blood money like you're working way too hard i was like ma'am you're supposed to tell me to keep going like, follow yeah. my dreams and so how. you yeah. gotta like the people so, who made happy with your music okay yeah, yeah. Uh, megan and i have a lot of therapy experience yeah, yeah. So this pros, is a safe so couch this is a safe place. I, I like you guys being my therapist i don't really want to go to somebody okay we'll tell and, the whole world and you ask yeah. your truth well let's yeah, yeah, yeah. i'd <laughs> love to start with when did you realize you had a problem um after like a four day bender um waking up on my bathroom floor in a puddle of blood stop that's when you realized you had a problem i was just gonna ask the same question that's oh. not when you realized or is you that when you realized you wanted I to thought, fix oh, the problem my bad yes. my bad i thought you were asking like when the, did first, you time you the like, first time you were like the it's not maybe, college partying anymore maybe i don't have control of this yes when was that moment do you even know that moment <laughs> no dude i just knew when i was just waking up and drinking <clears> to <throat> like hair of the dog mm. just turned into another day of drinking that but then i would i don't know i would snap out of it by maybe tuesday Go to the gym Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it would be like a Friday to Tuesday is what you would define as a bender. Probably, And yeah. then you would come out of it yeah. for a couple days. The weekends, the freaking weekends. When you, do you ever feel like in those breaks, you got clarity that you were like, I'm on a bender? Or do you think it was just blurry back into what you knew? It was just like, fuck, I don't want to do that again. But then I, I'm just like, I was like a sucker of peer pressure and FOMO. It's so lame. If you're in your mid twenties and, 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 yeah. and, and suffer from FOMO, just grow up. You got to yeah. throw that away. Fine arts it's not Yeah, but it. it's, that's so hard. Yeah. FOMO is so real. I guess because of like Instagram and bullshit, but it's just bullshit. And I, I, he had uh, such bad FOMO after the pandemic too, when people started yeah, going out again. My problem yeah. was during the pan, like during quarantine, I was, uh, Oh, like on Instagram, just seeing people live. And I was just like, I think I'm just going to fucking move out. I'm going to run away because like I don't. He kept threatening me. He's like, I'm going to run away. I was like, okay, <laughs> teenage boy. So but... instead, I would just black out at the pool, eat mushrooms. And 
then I'd, I would just be like, oh, this house is amazing. You know, I'd be appreciative. Yeah, you did go through nice phases. Whenever you did mushrooms, you were so delightful. Yeah, and then I would just wake up hungover the next day and be like, fuck, you know? You, yeah. It's, it's never like, you're never always up. You know, you, you wake There's up. There's always a down. Yeah. I never acknowledged to myself that you had a problem until you would drink like at 2 p.m. whiskey on ice, like mm -hmm. just yeah. Be, on yeah. a Wednesday. The quarantine definitely... Do you think it accelerated it? It accelerated it. Oh, yeah. it like we were sure. going to end up here no matter what. Yeah, But yeah, quarantine yeah. accelerated yeah, it. Yeah, which is, it's, super it's for the best because, you know, I'm sober now. But yeah, during quarantine, I was on a pretty steady diet of uh, wake up, go to the gym, and then wine with lunch. Mm -hmm, yeah, that. Uh, you know, 15 <laughs> Bud like, Lights on it's Twitch. 10 a.m., dude. And yeah. then... Uh, <laughs> The Twitch too. 15 Bud Lights on Twitch and then a uh, little nightcap of whiskey, which is like a half a bottle and then wake up and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For well, a year. We, I mean, we've never actually talked. This is not like joke we've never talked about. It. We actually have never talked about it because I used to think, I never thought that you actually had a problem. I used to call him and yeah. say, I think he has a problem. He, yeah, like, he doesn't I don't have think a problem. Same time because I have... he can stop. And then there was a turn. And I'll tell you, the turn yeah. was what? was your what, turn? The turn for me was when you used to not, um, your personality wouldn't change when you would drink. You get yeah. like louder and louder. And then there was a turn where it started to change. Yeah, yes. like, this is where he may have lost control. Yes. Yeah. Well, that so I that had other things happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a mix of when was this Top Chef? No, mm -hmm. that was probably when I came chef. back from yeah, like after Florida. Golf after Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, so before quarantine, like. All right, we have to go back. Though. This is great. Yeah, yeah, we have to go. <laughs> Sorry, back. I broke your ears listening. Well, can we actually? I think we should quickly say where you're at today, and then go back to the beginning. Like today, you're sober. Yes, and sober of everything. Yes. So the except you, nicotine. Yeah. <laughs> what? Dude, I need something, bro. No, you don't. But yes, that, I do. That Eat smoking? food. What I was. Like a vape? I would smoke. One of no, those pen it's, things? it's literally. It's Gum? like. It's tobacco-free snus. It's not dip. What is it's snus? Tobacco. Snus is like. Are you snorting? No, no. dude. Oh, sorry. That's you put it in snus. your upper lip. It's just like instead of oh. dipping tobacco. Oh, it's, and it's just it's called chin cancer. Zin. No, it's not. It's called Zin. It's tobacco-free nicotine. We can let dive me in, have it. We can okay. dive into that on the next episode of okay. Working on Sobriety. <laughs> so, okay. but today you're sober of everything except nicotine. It's fucking okay. nicotine. That's still amazing. Okay. It's, it's like a cup of coffee, <laughs> dude. <clears throat> Snap it. clap to that. Snap clap to that. Yay! So, <laughs> take Kevin. take us all, the audience, the world. The, Who are you? Is, Ryan? It, is it fans of Who working on it? Are they called workers? For? Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't okay. like it. I, I mean, no bad idea in a brainstorm over here. No so, bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, yeah. Worker bees. Okay, we'll work on it. Worker bees is better. Yeah. But no. Okay. Okay. So Ryan, Ryan, uh, take us back to this moment. Quarantine. You had gone on a trip to Florida. You came back. What's happening? Well, all right. Well. Or if you want Once to go I further behind, let that. loose out of quarantine. I immediately went right back to cocaine. Okay, so. I love drinking and cocaine goes really well if you like to drink a lot. It just, people that do it, if you don't understand it, it's just because they love to drink and you just keep going and going and going. Because and it like, like makes you feel sober for a second and then you can handle more. Yeah, a little quick bump, clear your head and you're like ready to go. Ready to mm -hmm. go. Um, when did you and, first try cocaine? High school. High school. What? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I mean, high school on the island of Nantucket. No, there's summertime, there's summertime, heroin. summertime, Nantucket. You can get whatever okay. you want. Yeah. So you tried it then. Would you say from that point to when you got to Los Angeles, you were using it consistently? No. So when I went to freshman year in college, I was like, I don't want to do that all the time. So I decided not to. And you're in Florida. Yes, but I still. I mean, I I only did it like once or twice in high school, right? Um, and then, let's see. By sophomore year, I was just like, I'm going to pop Adderalls and drink. Um, and then junior year. Junior year was probably in the high most. school, right? This We're is in college. college We're in college. Because oh, yeah. remember high school, you had us drink before school one day with Minte? <laughs> yeah. I went but to the, course class drunk as fuck. Okay, listen. I'm trying Anyways, to just, sorry. I'm, I'm college, trying to like, college, this is a long college. fucking this story. Long yeah, yeah, yeah. Slide. Be quiet. Sorry. <laughs> Why? I know you hate it. It's good. Okay. Pretty much, burnt? I'm just a okay, gosh. spoiled piece of shit. But nope. All right. 
Um, okay, so yeah, junior year of college, it got, that's when it got really bad. So I, uh, cause all you need is like one friend that wants to do drugs with you. And pretty much it was just, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like, I don't even know how, I just bullshitted my way through classes. I was in advertising and PR, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> we were, I mean, so was I. We studied colors. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I didn't even go. <laughs> what color is going to sell these Oreos? Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff. Um, That was a steady diet of yeah coke and then xanax that's when i dipped into xanax and i will say xanax is the best drug in the world and the worst drug in the world because that's just like you're you can't remember anything um you're just constantly in a fog but it was the only thing that helped me sleep and i think i've struggled with like anxiety, overthinking. I've never liked myself since I was a little kid. But I would be, I was like, if I can just be the class clown or something, like make everyone around me, I care. I just wanted everyone around me to like me, mm-hmm. which is such a waste of time. All any but advice, a very real feeling. Yeah, but who the doesn't best, feel that? The best advice I can give is just like yourself first. Like fuck everybody else. You know, that's what I've finally come to the conclusion of. But uh. Yeah, so then the Xanax turned into kind of an everyday thing. And I I was just taking like a quarter bar at a time, so I didn't think it was a problem. And then that summer, I was 21 in Nantucket. I didn't really do that much Coke, but I was still doing Xanax. Like at the end of my night, I would just pop a quarter bar after drinking all day, which is like, it's dangerous. That's you how- You do that to sleep. Yeah, and then I would wake up and take another quarter uh, just to get through the day. And it was just like a repeated cycle. Meanwhile, we had no idea. No. Because like, I mean, I was just a very, I could just put on a happy face and just pretty much just a bullshitter, really. Yeah, you're very I mean, good It becomes it. a skill of an addict to hide. Yeah. yeah, I guess. See, I don't really know the science behind it or what was going but i yeah just a pathological liar selfish human being um and then when i moved out to la that first like six months i didn't really know i was just like i don't want to ask about drugs they're everywhere all i had to do was like literally nod (laughs) but i was like let's see if i can get through this and i couldn't the first two weeks like i just didn't sleep i couldn't sleep and then that's when that sleep paralysis was kicking in. Yeah. And that's when I was like, Xanax is the worst drug. I was because trying to figure out what was going. Yeah. So I was withdrawing from and Xanax. And what is sleep paralysis? <gasps> Pretty much demons in the night. You don't know what this is? No, I don't like, know what So is. like anyone can get it, um, but it's the most terrifying thing. I, don't, I haven't had it, but basically there's like movies on it where you uh, wake up in your sleep, but you're frozen and you start seeing shit and it's mostly dark shadows of people. And some people feel them or like, like you've had it, Devin. No, she just knows about it. <laughs> what did you, he's woken up being choked so you, before. This, like, but like, this was like you coming down from Xanax having it. Yes. yes. Okay. We, when I was living in Park La Brea, <clears throat> oh. Megan was like on tour. I was just alone. And yeah, every night I was afraid to fall asleep. I mean, all that, I can only imagine that that just convinces you I need to have Xanax again. To help me sleep. Yeah, but my, my yeah. brain worked was like, holy fuck, that is the worst drug in the world. I need to just push through this because I do shit. I stuff everything down and do it by myself and I shouldn't have done that. I should have went to a doctor and said, hey, I had a problem. How do I help? How do I withdraw from this the correct way? Mm-hmm. Well, that's um, you have currently, you have the benefit of perspective. When you're 21, you don't have that. Nobody yeah. has that. Mm-hmm. So yes, you have that now and that's amazing. But you can't beat yourself up for being 21 not having that because literally nobody yeah. has that. I just didn't want to make my mom sad. It was pretty much that. I was like, I can secretly withdraw from this. But every day was a fucking nightmare. I would go into, I was interning at Adam Factory and I'm just walking in there like I, my- That was my I, management at the time. Yeah, I just have a ringing in my brain all fucking day. And 
uh, like I'm just Googling it and it's just all withdrawal symptoms from. Yeah. So how long did this last once you got to LA? How long did the withdrawal? Two experience? years. Because I was two still years. getting it in we Laurel like, Canyon. I filmed myself sleeping one night in Laurel Canyon. We laughed Canyon. about it and thought like, oh, he just has nightmares. <laughs> and then Two eventually years. he was like, I was withdrawing from drugs. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like it, it. So in this two year moment, did you confide in anybody? No. No, dude. No. <laughs> I just <laughs> suffered through it. And Things he giggled. We now know moving we forward. We joked about yeah. it. Yeah. He was like, oh, I just like had a withdrawal. And I was like, have oh. demons in yeah. my sleep. Yeah. yeah. He's like, they're demons. Easier to but joke it, about. It was so bad. It got to the point where, yeah, so I'd wake up. It's pretty much you wake up during REM sleep and your body is paralyzed. You cannot move. And I would just see a shadow man in my room and he would just get closer and closer and closer. And I'm just fucking frozen and I'm screaming, Mm -hmm. but I cannot move. And like, yeah, one of the nights I was waking up like gasping for air. So it's probably sleep apnea too with all the booze. But the, like, the shadow thing was like choking me and I couldn't tell if it was real or a dream. And that's like that was like the worst that the sleep paralysis ever got. So and in, I just, in that sleep paralysis moment, you were still drinking. I was boozing, yeah, okay. for sure. The booze never I didn't stopped. just okay. like cut everything off because of the Xanax. I drank all the time. Mm-hmm. Like 21, 22. Tw- yeah, like those those years I was out at clubs every single night. And you're 28 right now? Yeah. 28. Yeah. And he like did weed some, did weed, <laughs> smoked weed sometimes, but you're, you're never really good at I, it. No, no, no. Like I smoked all the time as a kid in like high school, right? And by the time I got out here, it's just too fucking strong. Or, or, yeah. or because of the <laughs> Xanax, is. I just developed severe anxiety without it. And then so every time I smoke, I just, I hate it. I, yeah. I panic every single time. Right. Super Same. paranoid. So after the two year period of the sleep apnea, or not apnea, sleep paralysis, mm-hmm. then where did we go? Because you're about 24 at this time. Yeah, I mean, but during but during all that, I was doing coke all the time as well. Okay. Like that. So the only thing that had left at that point was the Xanax. Yes. Got it. That was the drug. Where was, I was it like, just coke? Is, uh, I mean, in those those beginning years, yeah. But in the last like four years, it was pretty much mushrooms, coke. Molly, if you ha- if if someone's doing it, they're having a good time, and they hand it to me, I'm gonna do it, mm-hmm. and I would just drink. Like people like to smoke until they freak out, and they like uh, you know, they like to smoke themselves unconscious. I like to drink until I black out, and I don't know why. I like to disappear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the bro- like the mushrooms were like fun for you in the quarantine, and I I let you do. I like liked it almost because I was like, he's so nice when he's mm-hmm. on mushrooms. But then he would keep drinking, and yeah. then he'd go, "I need a handful of more mushrooms." And I one day fought him, like, "You're good, yeah. Like yeah. you can't walk. I, yeah. see, you I'm don't just like, need more I mushrooms. have no stop. save them for I'm, another yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. I, I have no like. <laughs> this is we're done now. I would drink until I'd fall asleep on the couch with like a death grip on the glass of tequila. Yeah, you know? like I would pull it out, and he'd be like, like a dead body, just like, <laughs> or he'd wake up like, and I was like, mm, "Game is the problem." Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, just not good um and then carried him to his bed a lot too yeah when you wake up after those moments of like being carried to the bed or forgetting everything it it just becomes i videotaped and we laughed i enabled the whole thing so in the i I mean the external you're laughing do you feel anything in that moment like are you feeling no it was just it was just like another day for me i was like this is it those are my fun saturdays or sundays whatever i did i got I, I was like yeah that's just a part of the week me and daryl thought it was funny and then there'd be a part of us that's like it's annoying like the I'm, eighth, I'm a large human the eighth <laughs> time of picking his ass up is like yeah. get up buddy like yeah. i have a kid i don't want to put you to bed too we have yeah. a video we could probably throw that in yeah we do have a video of me dragging him and and justin is the only one who was fully aware yeah because we like, would fuck this kid, we we're dude. cracking up i'm dragging him he's hitting his head Justin's like, what a piece of shit, get up. And we're like, Jay, help him, he's struggling. Right. And Jay's like, I mean, you could have just let me fall asleep on the couch. But I, I think it's important because anybody that suffers with addiction and is dealing with sobriety and the people around them, it is very hard to see the truth. It is very hard to see yeah. the truth. So you and Daryl and your parents, it is so hard to just look through that and be like, he has a problem and we're going to fix it. You want to support him and take care of him because he seems sick. Like he actually, like in the night, he's like passed out and you want to put him to bed. You want to take care of him. You want to coddle him. 
you don't want to think there's a bigger issue. Yeah. Yeah. And then now going back to your question of when did I realize I had a problem? I finally just remembered. Hmm. Sorry. There's like a lot. This is good. So no, yeah. I forget, but it was um, that time in London when I got mugged. mugged. That was when that I was, was like, the first time I realized. want to stop. Yeah. Because um, there was a time before quarantine where I got into ketamine. Mm-hmm. So I was at a party in the hills, like three in the morning. They're putting out lines and I do one. And he was like, I was like, what the fuck was that? He's like, oh, that's K. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, ketamine. I was like, okay. And then uh, I fucking loved it. Like, and what is ket- like, yeah, what, what, is what does that? it do? And you snort it? That's it what just, people say a K hole, right? K-hole. Yeah, if you do a lot of it, but if you do a little bit of it, you're just, you're in your happy place and you're kind of just coasting. Okay. And then you mix it with Coke. I did a uh, lot of, yeah. Okay. You just mix them. Okay. And you kinda, so you, that, those are the nights just, you just black out. Um, not all the time, but some. No, I feel like I blacked out less with the drugs. I, but I don't really know. I but the time know. in London. See, my problem with the time in London, I don't know if I got slipped something because I stayed. I should have just went home. My problem is like, we oh, I'm going to keep partying. Club. I'm going to keep partying. Oh, right. Okay. And everybody left and I'm like, nah, fuck it. I'll just stay I'll out stay. and I'll figure it out. I was which like, he's having the best don't, time. Don't He'll do that fine. in I almost Europe. left my security guard with you too. Yeah. I was so damn close. Would have been nice. And I, I think I was like, I didn't want to embarrass you or something. Like I'm a teenage mom with their it. teenage son. Like, no. Yeah. I, here's the it's babysitter. Tough. It's like, tough I didn't want to. To play devil's advocate on the other side though. If we're looking back right now and you're realizing that's when you first realized you had a problem. You have to, and you know this. You have to, you have to hit some, some, not just one. You have to hit some rock bottoms yeah, that to was, want to make a change. That was one that of was them. A, that was a big So like if you're in it, bottoms, that so. could have, I would argue that could have been, I'm sure it would have been nice and it would have been great to not have the end of that night, but, but the, it would have been enabling. Of what? Like enabling his ability if to If I do, gave him yeah. the security guard? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually Literally true. So true. it was <laughs> for the back, because luckily it's it was a, a very word. safe mugging in terms of, so- my problem is I don't know if I got slipped ketamine because I immediately recognized it once I started coming out of the uh, K-hole. That was an absolute K-hole. That is when you're you're not in control of anything and you're kind of in the fucking time warp tunnel. And I just remember all of a sudden I'm in an alleyway pretty much like surrounded by five people and they're just taking my like chain off. And I'm just like... uh I'm like, come on, please stop, please stop. Like, I'm just like almost well, you laughing. Have no control. I have no control. I'm like, guys, it was a gift. It was a gift. My sister gave me this gift. Please, like, I, I just, please, please stop, please stop. And then they just like, they, I could see them laughing because they were just like, this is too easy. Right. And then they just left. And then I, I'm finally like crawling out of the K hole, still sitting on like some random alley street in London. And I'm like, fuck, that wasn't a dream. And then I call an Uber go home um, and, but I like I don't know if, if someone was just like hey you want to do a bump of this because mm-hmm. yeah it's I, like I, how you, so you got messed to up. yeah it's crazy too because we left you in that club with no friends like no body <laughs> and you were like I'm good I'm yeah, happy it's, but it's also in those moments we're like ugh Ryan can be friends with anybody Ryan can be friends yeah. with anybody yeah. it's, it's a just social not advisable in Europe not in a city I'm at just all. a I'm gonna say it's not advisable anywhere anywhere yeah. I don't think I know, this I'm is like advisable city, anywhere. Not anywhere okay yeah true 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 Definitely not Europe though. Uh, but now my problem was like the next day we went to go get lunch right at that sushi spot, mm. and I'm like, guys, I told you and mom, I was like, I want to be done drinking, and you were like, no, you're fine. It was just, don't worry because you want to make me feel better about that mm-hmm. night being like, that's oh, not I your fault, and you're like, you. just have a glass of wine, you're fine, and I was like, I think this is it for me, like that. I am not Don't okay with that. that. I could have been. Mom's gonna. Cry. I could have been like stabbed. Like, what the fuck am I doing? And and you guys like, it's not your fault. Like, you got drugged. And in my head, I'm like, I probably chose to do that drug, mm-hmm. and I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I I think I was so like, oh, you got drugged. You got drugged. Right. Like, you're fine. You're yeah. fine. Hey, because my well, no, it's well, no, it's because that's you love him so much that you don't want. Yeah. To nobody wants was, to see that. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to see that. And you clearly, like you just said, you didn't share the entire story yeah you knew a part of you there was a chance you made the choice 
Right. But you didn't share that. So neither side was sharing the whole story, There's which only, is very normal in these. It's, I mean, it's an intimate family thing and it's someone you care so deeply about. That is not easy to do. It's not easy on either side. It what takes I don't time know to get is there. There's only like less than a handful of moments where <laughs> you had those moments where my heart like hit the floor and yeah. I, it's one of those, oh my God, I could have lost him over something stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but how many of those do you need to realize he has a problem I should tell him or we should acknowledge it? That's where I could never, what I could never figure out. Yeah. And I'd even ask people and they'd be like, nah, it's just like Ryan. Like, yeah, I think a lot of it too is like what I'm dealing with with my friends. They only see me like one or two nights a week or for an event. And they're like, dude, you, you can just go back to drinking. And I was like, you guys don't like see, you don't know me during the week. Like I, I mm-hmm. like to drink alone. I like being alone as extroverted as I am. I love being the fuck alone people annoy me often (laughs) i'm sick of people and like a lot of the times i'm just drinking just to like all right this will be entertaining if i just get fucked up and kind of just coast let's see where the blacked out version of me takes me i mean a lot of that's how a lot of people end up drinking and getting addicted to things is they want to tune out everything else around them or they're trying to escape something or they're trying to feel something it can be any of those. I also remember like a pivotal moment in high school. Like we, we moved to a new high school and I was struggling making friends. I was asking like where the parties are and they're like, oh, this kid's a fucking narc. And then mm. finally there was a, some sort of part. We're playing quarters. I don't know if you know the game Qu- quarters mm. with beer. I don't know. Oh, it's so <laughs> East Coast. It's like uh, a chandelier know? of glasses. Nobody knows so East Coast thing. <laughs> it's like highball glasses um, in the middle one highball glass in the middle and then surrounded are like little scotch glasses and you fill them up with beer and the one in the middle has all the beer and you hit the quarter and you, if, bounce and you the keep quarter. Pour, pouring it in you ba- no nah, you fill the like, you, know you fill the middle cup yeah in, is with you a do quarter. it with a quarter yeah and then yeah. if the quarter hits if it goes in the middle cup you have to drink that um, cup. everybody has to drink yeah everybody has to drink and then the last person that Oh, does it has it to like drink the would, middle? You would try to get it in someone else's. Yeah, cup you try too? and get it in someone else's tub to, oh, to get okay. them to drink, and, okay. then it, and then everybody races. And then like, uh, like my teammate was struggling, or, or someone was struggling. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'll chug the middle cup," and I like slam it immediately. And then these kids are like, "Holy fuck, train! You can fucking chug a beer! Oh wow, wow!" Like, and then I was like, "Oh, maybe you got these kids will like affirmation. These kids will like me if I'm just like the fucking party guy." He was so then I just the became party guy in high school. The party guy. Because it's how you figure out how to connect to people. Like yeah. his, what is it? Semi, semi formal. His <laughs> oh. senior home year, ca- homecoming. homecoming or something? Yeah. His senior year, I was a junior. His senior year, we all got. Oh no. Yeah. And, oh, can we say this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, take that one out. I yeah. don't know. His whole class went, and my mm, everyone got like glow things for your mouth, you know. Yeah. And they got like turned, and they went there and partied like it was a rave. Like his shirt was off at one point, and a I girl was just the principal grinding comes on. Oh, this her. is at school. At high school. Yeah. Oh my god! Bro, yeah. I thought this so was by, at someone's house. No, after. so by this the is next school, by my yeah, yeah, senior yeah. year, by my life, senior year, they had whistles, and if we got too close to each other, they we were like, ruined it. Wah! "We ruined yeah. it." Yeah, and we had breathalyzers, everything, because of their freaking class. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By senior year, I, it, I was, you know, I and was you were like leader of the pack. He was. It was the you were Mister Party. That was the last time he shaved his head. <laughs> that's why I have PTSD. <laughs> right. That's why you have. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But like, so London happened, but London, for everybody watching and listening, London was almost three years ago. Yeah. And you only decided to become sober, where are we at now? Three months? Four months? Um, How long have we What been date in the house? is it? Today, it's in, we're in September. <laughs> But they fucking <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. Let's just say. All right. <laughs> all right it's, it's been it's been like uh, almost three months. Three months. Right. Okay. Um. So what happened from London to three months ago? I just I'm just saying I just went like fucking nuts during quarantine. So then when I was let loose, I just went back to like very old ridiculous habits where mm-hmm. I was ending up at like it's all after parties in the fucking hills till 7 a.m. just doing drugs and like I go to Florida and I was pretty much just on coke and ketamine for four days and drinking tequila I'd wake up and just drink tequila and then just do drugs like Mm -hmm. then I was pretty much up for four days 
I think I I had like two coconut shrimp the entire week. Um, when you asked me to go to Florida, <laughs> I was like, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. Yeah, but it was not. At, it was just my last. I, I Like a piece of me was like, fuck it. This is going to be my last two raw. Because when I first started going out again after quarantine, it just wasn't the same. I was like, why the fuck did I miss this so much? Mm. And then I was kind of sad. I was like, this is all I care about in life and it's just not that fun. I need to like figure something else out. Mm -hmm. um, so when you got to the point of deciding this is done, let's go to that weekend. Okay. Let's. Um, yeah. So sh I was on a little bit of a bender and then Megan had a conversation with me at a very poor time. Wait, can I start to how we got there? Just like he's my videographer and this was like pretty much his last week of work. And I noticed on set every day, usually he's the fun one and everyone loves him, but he was sleeping all day long. And then he would leave set to get like a 12 pack of beer I, and yeah. drink all of that and then nap again until he had to work. There, Cause there was only home. one moment to take pictures and then the rest yeah. is just sitting on the trailer and I was losing my fucking mind. I yeah. was just like- and he's stinky. But I, cause I was like hungover and miserable. Yeah. Like once I sobered up, I was like, this job's sick. <laughs> like, so then, but I was creating my own like, I well, was, you can't see anything clearly. In you that can't. Moment. You're not functioning no. correctly at yeah. all. No, you're you're making up situations that don't exist. You're miserable for absolutely no reasons. Um, and every day I was like working up the bravery to sit you down and talk to you to be like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, to just ask like, what is it? Right. But it was. And then on a day you drank a bottle of wine for something. It was like a birthday or it something. It was like this, when you two spoke, it would have been day two of the bender. And then you went three more days, I think. No, no I, really, I just went like one full day. Okay. Where Straight. I was just like, well, because Megan said to me, she was just like, I was like, I'm just so bored of this fucking job. Like, I'm so over it. I love you. I just want to be your friend. And you were like, well, I just think that you'll end up on the street like a crackhead if I don't well, give you this job. I said, um... Because you're like, I'm going to run away. And I was like, you won't last like a month out there yeah. in the wild. So. And I shouldn't have said that. And he which, took it hard. I was just like, I'm not. Well, what did it make you feel like in that moment? I was like, fuck her, dude. I'm If she, <laughs> if that's how she thinks, fuck it. I'm going to do all the cocaine in my room and stay up for an entire day. Mm -hmm. After that combo of keep like, drinking. he was like, I'm running away. Goodbye forever. I, I was like, okay. Like I acted, which is a fucking childlike response. <laughs> right. I was. Right. And Daryl tried to come in and be like, hey, guys, she just worked really hard all day. And Dar Ryan was like, ha, ha, get out of here. And I was like, Daryl, right. just leave. Right. Yeah. It was bad. It was so really bad. I just go, fuck it. If I'm a piece of shit, I'll be a piece of shit. And then I just right. drank myself into a, you know, I, I just drank beer for about 20. Why, meanwhile, this is like all on Twitch. Twitch. <laughs> And like Live. even the yeah, and, and like I'm, just, I'm doing a bunch of coke, so no one knows. And we just had like the worst conversation of our entire relationship life. And he's on Twitch, on Twitch, and we're checking it's all in I've, every thirty minutes. We're all just checking to see in. If he's okay, mom's checking in. Just I mean, and we're mom's like, like, I didn't think you were that fucked up. I was you like, you seemed I, fine. Yeah, I was like, which he's is also fine. scary. It's terrifying, and I, had, I mean, it's terrifying for you. It's terrifying for everybody. To, yeah, especially to look back to think you were that level of messed up. Yeah, and you presented yourself. Perfectly fine. Perfectly it's a, it's fine. definitely a skill that it is a I skill. developed. Um, and it was all night long till the next day. To the, it was a 22 hour stream. And then after that, I was just like, all right, I'm going to finish the rest of the tequila. And then that's when, and then I, you know, ran out of blow and I don't know. So the, 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 oh, you the did cocaine that night? That whole, in the 22 hours. Oh, that's why it. you stood away. I mean, that does make away. sense how you stayed awake, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, I was being a trash bag. Okay. And uh, then I woke up on my bathroom floor in blood and my head's pounding. I'm like, oh. And then I get up, I look in the mirror and my face is covered in blood. And I just flash back to when I was a freshman at Tampa and I had did a similar similar thing. I drank from 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. And we were leaving a bar and I was like running, fell on my face, scorpioned, ripped my entire face off on the pavement. Have a picture? I have a picture here. And uh, so oh. that, yeah. 
So I, all of a sudden I flash back to, which was 10 years right, ago, and right? Just and I was just like that little kid. I remember waking up after that day, just like so fucking sad and just being like, what have I done? And in that moment, I wish I cleaned up my fucking act, but it just took 10 years. Right. So I was just like, all right, this is it. I immediately go out to the living room <laughs> and I see Megan and she's like, oh, what the? Oh, like, fast her, forward to the present day the when present you, just, day. Yeah, when you now, came out after comes, the bender. Yes. First, he texts me because I just said like, are you okay? Because it's 4 p.m. We hear nothing. I tell Daryl, what if he's dead in there? Right. He's like, he's not. He'll, he'll be fine. He texts me like a, a paragraph of like an apology. And I was like, this is sus, but like, okay, heart, because I didn't know what to say. Then he comes out with a big black eye and open, yeah. like I cut on his eyebrow. eyebrow. here, which in your head bleeds a lot with and all the alcohol. And my thought is like, how did he get out of the house and go to a club and get uh, in a fight? I and didn't go anywhere. Like, yeah, and that was the saddest part. So he yeah. sat down and told us, what'd you I say? Just, well, when, you, when he came out like that first, how did you feel, Megan? When you saw him come like out? Like my you heart seen was ripped it, out. Yeah. And I thought, like, how did he get out? Right. How did he escape? <laughs> right. Where did he go? Right. Who hurt him? Yeah. I'll kill them. And, like, the way sadder part was the truth. Right. And which did, hurt yeah. me way and, worse. And did you know when you were walking out that you were going to share the truth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was just okay. like, I, came, I, first of all, I was like sobered white. up and I felt so bad for, about our conversation. Right. So I was like, hey, I fucking love you guys. And I'm sorry that was a bad time for you to talk to me. And Daryl was like, I tried to tell her. I tried to tell her that you Fucking were drunk. No. She didn't know that I was drunk. He, yeah, he oh my did. God, both of you with your Daryl impersonations. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's a whole other episode. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. like, baby, got guys, this. I, I was like, thanks, babe. You. You. <laughs> yeah, dude. I didn't know you were that fucked up. See, that's my problem. I never maybe know where he, you're maybe at. Maybe he said he didn't know. Maybe I'm fucking that up. We didn't know. We didn't know. But I was and just like, I like, fucking oh, love you guys. This is it. This is the this last straw. <laughs> this last straw. We've heard that a couple yeah. times. <laughs> right. And I, I was just like, I am finally ready. Like, and I don't know, like, if I hit a special part of my brain that just that it's like I never want to drink alcohol. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm only a few months in. Like, I don't fucking know. We'll see what happens. I but mean, I I tr I really right now never need to touch alcohol again because. It just fucking leads to, I go into a train, I'm a train wreck. Right. Just alcohol? Or do you feel the same way about drugs? No, absolutely against the drugs. Okay. The alcohol, the only reason alcohol why I do drugs is there. because of booze. Right. I'm, I don't want to do drugs and I just drink right. a, a bit. And I'm like, fuck, I need to go get something. Like, I mean, the reality of it, like, do you, do you classify yourself as an addict? I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. I, I I mean, from like, I will say, I won't speak for you, Megan. I will say that I do classify you as an addict. Okay. And I think Gage. I feel very strongly that addiction of any form is a disease. Yeah. It's not a choice. There are choices along the way. Right. But addiction is a disease. So when it takes over your body with drinking and drugs and whatever it may be, there is a point where you can't make a decision. Yeah. So now you're cleaning yourself up from that. And yes, you're three months in and it is a... It's a lifetime. It's like, a lifetime. It is a lifetime. But I'm excited. I'm like, it's the first time in my life that I'm very excited and happy about how I feel. Like I don't, my anxiety is so much lower. I mean, you've never I, seemed clearer right, from where I said, right. I've known you for ever. almost 10 years. Yeah, ever. I mean, you've known him his entire life. Like <laughs> you just, you've never seemed clearer. Yeah. There's a calm about you that you didn't have before. Yeah. I just, I, I just thought, you know, I was like, oh, this makes me feel better and I can, you know, maybe cooler and some shit but it you know like you know my first drink was at 12 right that no. was when i first got drunk massachusetts i was like 12. 15 i was 12 years old no i don't and I it wasn't a good experience right and i don't know why i went back yeah well i will say <laughs> you're gonna hate this comment but from the like even just what you've described and the root of how you got started and how you got to where you were when you decided to become sober yeah so much of this you would thrive in finding a therapist that works well with Rich, you because so but so much of like even the way you describe because it's so relatable the way you describe the feeling of this is how i figured out how to fit in yeah like i don't i, I have a similar thing with like eating say everybody loves to eat with me because i eat everything in sight and i'm like i'm gonna stop eating, eating. i know yeah. but i need to stop eating everything in sight but i'm like well are people not gonna want to hang out hang out as much like, do they Whoa. not want to go to dinners okay. because I'm going to eat the like simple salad with salmon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, that's a very simple version of what right. you described. But when you talk about going and being the party guy, yeah, like 
you fear losing what you've built in terms of, and you were desiring friends at the time. That's hard. Yeah. And we I moved to I've, a new school in high school. Even harder. Yeah, I think I've also just gotten older. I'm just so sick of everybody. Like I, I like yeah. a very small friend group. I love my family. Um, and I'm actually very grateful for my friends. I still hang out and go out to bars with my friends. And they're just like, you know, they'll crack some jokes, which is standard and it's fine. But they're just like, I'm, I'm really proud of you, man. Like, this yeah. is good. Like, I have one buddy who's like, you know, I've seen different versions of you because I I'm I fucking change all the time. I, we all I, do. I don't, I don't know who I don't know who I am. But he's <laughs> like, but he's like uh, I love Sober Trainer. Like, mm-hmm. this is my yeah. favorite version of you. Well, I also think this will be the version of you that you figure out who you are. Right. Because it, Bars. You, you can't you can't do that. No. When you're being taken to other places and you're yeah. affected with addiction. You can't do it. Nobody can. It's not just you. Tommy Bruce, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me it's, more. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. But I love you, Tommy. It's, I love but you so much. It, it, like this is a it's very exciting. I mean, like from sitting like watching you grow up, it's super exciting. Yeah. Isn't because, it? Yes. Because it's like, oh, Ryan has found himself. Right. And like to be able to step into that. And it is petrifying to tell your truth petrifying i just my entire life i never wanted to let my parents down i was always afraid of failure and then in that failure failure idea and like fear i would just get fucked up to be like oh you know it's i wish i could like shake the younger version of myself and just like take a fucking deep breath you don't Mm -hmm. have to figure everything out we all just (laughs) just, like truly just yeah i think you had more social anxiety than i did in high school like yeah, I remember, I, mom would let you stay home because you had a crazy acne one day. Yeah, I would and just I was be like, "Mom, like, what I got a pimple. I'm staying home. <laughs> yeah, and she'd be like, "Oh, geez, sweetheart, like you should." Like my mom loves me. Mommy yeah. loves him. If he yeah. if he murdered someone, she'd be like, "I yeah, did it." We would bury the body. I do together. think that is an excellent <laughs> time to reiterate your point at the beginning. It does not matter your circumstance. It, does doesn't. it doesn't matter if you have the best parents in the world, the worst parents in the world, no parents in the world, yep. no siblings, no family, no friends. It does not yep. matter. Mm-hmm. Addiction is a disease. If it infects you you're infected for life. Right. It just, that is just fact. Yeah. And I just, I think I finally just accepted who I am. Yeah. I also, you department. just hit on um, failure, which is an entirely separate episode. Yeah. The fear of failure should be, I think, completely flipped on its head to like the success of failure. Cause yeah. you will never figure out your peak successes Unless until you, you fail. fail. You just won't. Yeah. yeah. You just said you didn't know who you are, but like you definitely know more about who you are now. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, you do. I <laughs> lie. Yeah. How yeah. do you, what are, like, what are your resources now? How do you? Well, I owe Daryl my life. Um, oh my God, he's going to ball his Darryl eyes out. Daryl opened our eyes to transcendental me- uh, meditation. Mm-hmm. And if you're not familiar with that, it's pretty much 20 minutes twice a day. You get uh, a mantra and it's, it's just a moment all to yourself and your subconscious and you're just breathing focused on your mantra and you let all your thoughts in and let them go. And just to take, you don't, you know, you don't have to do transcendental meditation, but if you could just take a moment for yourself and just breathe, you'll feel at least a little better. I can yeah, promise you that. For mm-hmm. sure. Um, I hate a lot of like guided meditations and I never was good at it. And Daryl is like my main hippie. Like he knows all the, let me like sages, his body and, and things that East coast were like, what are you doing? You witch, you know, mm-hmm. but um, I love all of them cause I learned so much and transcendental meditation is the first one that is like, you can't mess it up. Yeah. Mm. The other ones are like, no, focus on this, focus on you can this. Never it's do like, it wrong. No matter what you think about it, you're not wrong. Even and if that you have makes a bad me meditation because you're yeah. like, I can't fucking stop thinking. It's still it's still good, good because still good she she explained it to me like a wet rag. You're like squeezing it to get all the yeah stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like good. That's what you're doing. Yeah. For yeah. Interesting. For your I mean, and there's like there's there's so many different ways to approach it, and different things work for different people. I think yeah. that's important yes. for everybody listening and watching to understand is that there are yeah so many avenues and so many support systems that you just have to find something that works for you. And yep. you found transcendental meditation. You also yeah. have a wildly supportive family. Yep. Yes. I, and I'm just like very lucky in that department for sure. You have dogs. Like, the best family, the best dogs, best friends. Like, also, I don't know how you feel now about talking about your feelings, but ooh, therapy is so good to me, dude. Therapy. I just like recently felt overwhelmed. Got a new therapist. It's just nice to dump it on somebody. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. But it's also a couple things. One, it's nice to dump it on somebody that's not in your life. Yes. Yeah. Like an outside opinion. Yes, is wildly helpful. And when you talk about 
like figuring out who you are, it is really helpful with that too. And addressing like you have to younger Ryan and younger Megan and younger Tommy and younger anybody listening, mm -hmm. like everybody, no matter how perfect your life is, you all, everybody experiences trauma and experiences things differently. And you have no idea what is making you see something in present day, how you were actually affected by something that happened to you when you were younger. And like addressing that stuff and actually trying to embrace it is also how you figure out who you are yeah. in your current life. I got you. So you gonna talk to someone? Nah. Okay. I have a really good one. Yeah. I hey, you know it can't be mine. I'm good, this. dude. I to, talk to myself. To, you also have to be ready to do it. I've also just started being way more positive in pretty much any anything yeah. I do. Instead so, of negative. Um, also I've exercise. If I could just tell anybody, try and move, move yeah, 30, buddy. 30 minutes a day. Yeah. Try, for go like, for a walk. Start like two day two days a week, then three days a week, then four days a week. Like running has been the best thing for me for sure. If there's yeah anything right now sitting where you are three months sober full clarity on your life finally feeling like you know where you're going next what would you say to tampa ryan who had his first moment that you just referenced as the moment that you thought you wish you would have stopped everything so almost 10 years ago what would you say to him today <sighs> fuck no tommy hits me with the big questions i'm like what the fuck <laughs> It's gonna be okay, buddy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Um, yeah, like just don't, like stop overthinking, stop over drinking, um, and just. I don't fucking know. Can I I'm, ask you a lamer question? Um, you ten years from now, what would you tell that guy? Hmm. Aren't you glad I started at 28? <laughs> this surprise. That's, surprising. Yes. That's a lot of it. Of me? A lot of it was like I might as well just fucking start this. I was I was, I was like in my head I was like all right, 30s, I'll mm -hmm. shut it down. Mhm. Mm you did say that. I fucking I, just quit at 28. I think it. the key to many 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 things in life, addiction and sobriety being one of those biggest things that affects a lot of people, yourself and everybody around you is actually talking about it and being yeah. transparent, yes. transparent about it and being honest about it. So yeah, this, you know what? I wish I could tell my younger version just like, hey, call your mom and, mama and, will, and just explain everything. I can tell mama everything. anything. Yeah. Like, you're only going to make this worse By the way, if you keep going. She's the only one listening to this. So, And yeah. she's sobbing, like mom, tears so of joy. Sorry. I love you. And I, <laughs> I'm, I've i always been upset with myself, but now I'm, I'm very happy with myself, okay? Everything's good. We're he happy. loves himself. And I love Maggie. I and I love Jesse. Right? And we all are good. <laughs> one big happy family. For her birthday every year, she goes, I just don't want you guys to fight when we were kids. I just want us to all like, go to walk Kelly on the Trainer beach. Kelly Trainer is the sweetest human on the planet. <laughs> That's all I want. Um, but like talking about it like this and in this public forum Ryan is very it's helpful to you help but it's so helpful to a lot people. of people and that's important <sighs> okay so just, thank you for being boy. so honest and thank being so you. transparent yeah. that yeah. helped me so much well we have a lot to work out so that's probably what <laughs> we're fine yeah <laughs> anyways a lot of other episodes guys. I, I, I hope I, yeah I hope I can help somebody but I, I, I just like I don't look at myself as that guy. I just feel like I was a spoiled scumbag that just fucking partied too much. That's where the therapist can help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I told my therapist, I was like, I shouldn't be sad. I have the best life ever. And she's like, have, have, have. everyone can be sad. Yeah. Right. Everyone can be Nobody sad. Nobody knows what it's like to be in your shoes. Challenges. Yeah. Well, we'll share some, uh, some resources for anybody listening yes. that is Links struggling below. with addiction. And I'm sure we will do many more episodes about working on addiction and sobriety. Does anybody else worship Tommy? Because I do. I do. What? <laughs> Should we get him back here all the time? Absolutely. It was great for these Can big Can you believe ones, he's yeah. my manager? <laughs> 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 That's why I got everything together. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for listening and watching. We love you so much. Every week we're going to have something new. TikToks? Tick oh, we have TikToks. <laughs> Motherfucker. I actually... Okay. I have let's, a. You want to end it on a high note? Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's play some I have like a really awesome uh, TikTok. Uh, it's Kevin Durant talking, and it's actually where my mindset has gone. Great. Instead of because I was always like, "How the fuck do I be happy? How do I be happy? How do I be happy?" And that's a never-ending cycle. You're never going to be happy. Yeah. I, I wanted to just reach this like I'm just going to go through life and enjoy every second of it, and that's kind of what's what's going on here with uh, KD. Awesome. 
Okay. I don't even I don't even like to use the word happiness. That's just a fleeting feeling. It can just go so up and down. I don't want to chase that feeling. It's just not a efficient way for me to live. I feel like just having peace and, and really uh, simply just enjoying being alive every day is the best place for me to be. You know, I don't want to be happy and sad. Like, I don't even want to have to go through that. I just want to just kind of float through life. I experience so much. I just want to take on every experience for what it is and enjoy it in the moment, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want to chase happiness, you know? So I just try to stay even. Wow. That's amazing. That's cool, right? Try to stay even. I yeah. love the I don't want to chase happiness. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I think that is the perfect thing to end on today. But what about mine? <laughs> you have, do you have well, a silly goose one? I'll take a silly turn goose the, one. Can you turn them up too? <laughs> this is such a silly goose I, one. <laughs> we, no, we got. We can end it with a okay, silly great. goose We'll too. do a silly goose okay, one. Okay, here silly we go. Silly goose. <laughs> Make sure this one's loud. It's all about the noise. So if you're just listening to this on audio, it's a sweet little boy in the hospital. Where are you, Anthony? In the emergency room. Why are you in the emergency room? So I inhaled the doggy toy. Are you sure? Pretty sure. That's what that noise is. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. Fuck That's yeah. how you win this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Great that right was now. amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> oh. Well, oh, thank God. Keep working on it, everyone. Keep All working right, on keep it. Keep working on it. Yeah. We'll talk to you next week. At, at, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, at working, working on, on a pod. pod. At, at working all on all socials. Yes. On all socials. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Love also, you. you know what, dude? What? I'm just going to start like shamelessly plugging my own shit, too. Do it. Go for it. The link in my bio for Instagram, which is ryan.trainer, you can make a donation to the uh, Boston Children's Hospital. Love oh, that. I love that. Uh, the New York City Marathon. He's a runner. He's a runner. He's a and also, star. you know what? Maybe they gotta find you. Maybe they don't know where your Instagram is. Jesus. Um, Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N underscore trainer. O-R. On all you platforms? Know, trainer. On most platforms. <laughs> On TikTok, it's just Megan Trainer. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, That's about it, right? Yeah. Working on, working on. All right. Thank you guys okay, for. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great us. day. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.